Now, as you can see, I've got a basic sketch on the canvas, and I've got no clear gel up here today. You could put a little bit on the trees, but there's no sky in the painting, so I don't see any need for clear gel. So let's go ahead and take some black, red, blue, and maybe a little, a little bit of our um, yellow ochre there. Just a little more red. I'm just trying to create kind of a soft color. That's pretty. Yeah, there we go. I want more mottled background. You know, this is supposed to be like trees in the background and whatnot. And so that's what we're doing. If you're not already sharing your work with me so that I can post it in the videos, you should. You should share it using the, the information on the screen. Hopefully you do that. It's, it's always fun to see. Now I've got this kind of a grayish purple tone going here. I think that'll be fine for what uh, for what we're doing. You know, you may want to go a little darker in the foreground, but kind of some of my mid-tone, mid-ground rocks, rather. There's not a lot of physical length, you know, in our in our painting. In other words, this is not 300 miles away. And so you've got to over-exaggerate the shift in colors. In uh, If this were a photograph, there would be no shift in color. There'd be no atmosphere. But because it's a painting, we can build the atmosphere in. And I think that works. There you go. I'm just quickly suggesting these rocks right about where I've got them. Not, not really worrying too much about it. This right here is some sort of a foundation for the, for the little water wheel. There you go. If you're not on Patreon, you should definitely check it out and consider joining because we're having a lot of fun. In fact, I'm going to post the entire version of this, this whole painting, all this craziness. I'm going to post it on Patreon if you want to try. Well, now I'm just scrubbing in some color for the, for the water. We're going to have a series of very small, not too big waterfalls here. And I think that'll be interesting. So I've got just that light blue gray, mushy color. It's all kind of just muddy at this point. And that's a good thing because my painting's tying together with color. A lot of the times, a little mud is actually a good thing. You can, for the most part, see just, you know, wherever it bottlenecks, that's going to be your waterfall. To playing around just doing something new. It's always, no, it's not always. It is not always fun to do something new. Occasionally it is though. Never had a bridge integrated into a landscape like this where it's not really the feature. It's just there. I think it would be worthwhile to go ahead and paint in some of this um, background yellowy color. How far up do we want to go? Maybe about like that. Just a, just a very small swatch of of land back there, very little. That's it. Okay, I think that'll work. A little bit more, a little darker, just to so it fades off it. I don't want it to be such a stark. I want it to have a little bit more of a fading away effect, and so I can achieve that just like this. Not any big thing. I looked at a few photos of real water wheel mills, whatever, but this is just most of my own design, just combining like everything I've seen just to say, okay, well, this is kind of what it should look like. So if this isn't totally accurate, that's why. <laughs> it's because I'm kind of just trying to, because I want to do my own. I don't want to just copy somebody else's photograph. Let me take a, a little bit of a break from this and let me paint in our, yeah, we'll, we'll make that work. I've got grays and I've got browns, just whatever you want to use. It doesn't really matter as long as it's lighter, lighter on this one side here. It needs to be lighter here. Just to go ahead and underpaint the bridge, get it in. I think it needs to grow, it needs to be a little bigger. There we go, yeah. And this bridge, the boards are going to kind of be like, kind of like this. An old bridge, it's not very big, it's, you know, one person could walk across it at, the t at one time. It's a pretty small bridge. Now I think, you know, there's several ways I could do this. I think I'm going to take the palette knife and remove a lot of this paint. Just scoop it up and you can save it on your palette or just toss it out. And that way at least um, I don't have as, you know, to use as many shop towels. It's a little more challenging to use shop towels because I got to cut in perfectly you know, and not fuzzy up my edge too much. Of course, this side needs to be sharpened up anyways. But so I think the palette knife is actually more appropriate. Let me just real quick fill in the rest of these trees. I just want to get that out of the way. I kind of was having fun. You know, I'm just you can tell I'm just sort of <laughs> flowing around the painting, having fun doing uh, basically what I want to do wherever I want to do it. And that's how I'm doing this painting. And so I'm going to continue with that theme. And the trees are really what I want to complete next. 
get some of these background trees in. Then we'll move on to some more interesting things, such as the, the building. So now I'm going to work in just the beginning stages of my water wheel. Obviously, as the name suggests, as round as possible is going to be the very best way to do this. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to sit here and make it 100% perfect. I'm sure I won't. But I, I will attempt to make this round. There you go. Of course, there's perspective to this water wheel. And I'm not making, you know, sometimes, sometimes you'll get ones that are real big and they take up the whole building. And, but oftentimes I've noticed they're a little more scaled down than I would have imagined. So I'm trying to stay maybe a little more realistic. Okay, so we got that. I think what's correct, <laughs> that's confidence for you. That is confidence. <laughs> I think it's correct to have just a little. And then we'll have the water running over that. Anyway, you have to give me a minute to play around with this. It's like the tractor. I, I don't know. I can't seem to stay away from these complicated subjects. Can somebody please just tell me to paint a regular landscape? <laughs> I'd like to paint a painting with one tree down the middle. I know I can do that. So at this point, everything really just needs to be wiped with a shop towel. That is the plan. That is the whole, really the whole step here. Get this, get this canvas dry to where it won't mud mix everywhere. I don't really want a bunch of mud. So that, that counts the rocks, that certainly counts the water wheel, that counts everything. All right, yeah, see that, that would have been a mud slick right there. Absolutely, I can just tell the way it was, the way it's coming off, the way it's spreading. That is a mud slick. And that's part of the reason why you don't or at least I, well, I, I won't do it. You know, I won't paint real sharp details in the beginning because so often I need to come back and remove paint and I'm going to end up destroying any sharp details that I, there's the paint there, any sharp details I would have added just going to be gone and lost and what a, a waste. You'll see later what, why we have to do all this tremendous amount of paint up here. As for all of this, I just need to absorb it. Stick the shop towel up on it maybe walk away for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, not too long, or bad things happen. <laughs> yes, they do. But at least a little while, I'm gonna allow this to sit. And so, and all of that oil from the paint will just simply soak into the shop towel, and I should get a nice result where I can highlight without creating mud. Now, it's been just a few minutes. I'm gonna remove these. It's very important that you don't wait too long. When in doubt, pull them off sooner than later because that's I can tell by the way that that pulled off that that is as long as I want to wait probably been eight or ten minutes at the most you know I can tell this because it's, it's kind of almost difficult to remove see that like up here this could actually because it's thicker paint I could leave it up there a little longer down here was sticky and the problem is your shop towel will literally fuse to the canvas See, I could have left that one on just a little longer, but anyway, that's it. Makes a big difference. Now I'll take some of this just light brown color and I'm going to begin to highlight my building here. The perspective isn't too aggressive. It's fairly, you know, fairly like even on both sides. So we'll try to, we'll try to make that work. It's not, um, it's not like sometimes you just barely can see a little bit of the other side, but this one's pretty even. And I think it makes it pretty simple. Of course, you can do any kind of boards you like. Probably be easier to do boards going vertically, but uh, in fact, I know it would. But I'm going to do them horizontally. I maybe won't do them all horizontally. Maybe I'll. I don't know. I don't want it to look like a barn. <laughs> that's that's my thought there. Anyway, we'll just keep playing here. So now I'm going to take some uh, little yellow ochre and white, really, maybe just a little black, black and yellow make green, but if you just put a little like 2% black, it just helps kind of gray it. Plus, I don't care if there's a little tinge of green on these rocks. In fact, I think that's a good thing. We're gonna have so many colors anyway, so it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But I'm going to go ahead and just begin to paint in some color on the rocks here. And of course, your light's coming very distinctly through like this. And we'll just go ahead and paint in the highlights as best we can here, just getting them established here on the rocks. This thing here it should be more like a built up 
column of some kind, something that more matches that. Okay, we'll, we'll make all that work <laughs> properly later. I'm just playing around trying to get some initial colors and shapes going. Now I'm going to take a shop towel and crumple it up and I'm going to just use the texture of the towel. You could do this other ways, but this is to me a very easy way. And just on the backside and on the underside of my rocks, I just want to texture them a bit. I want them so I'm going to kind of crumple it up and, and be mindful of, you know, okay, that's what I need it to look like, kind of crumpled up and pointy. And I'm just going to touch and all that's going to do is just soften and blend some of this, not smudging, I'm just tapping. And you could do this with a brush, but I think that texture is, is going to be a little bit more, oh, random than a brush. A brush is going to look more like foliage, but this is going to have more cracks. And honestly, it's all very subtle to begin with. But uh, I do see a difference. Uh, you know, I see it. I don't know how many other people are going to notice this in the painting. But uh, there we go. I like that. And I, I think it's bringing your attention more into this area to not have it too busy. This is actually removing some of the busyness of it. Here's a little bit of blue and white mixed up with the little detail brush. I'm going to try to paint in some of the water right now to get that highlighted and get some of the waterfalls happening. Of course, there are a lot of waterfalls. You can do tons of them, honestly, lots and lots of little waterfalls. I think it makes it kind of interesting have some little splashes up here. I'm doing it though with the small brush to create a little bit of detail and whatnot that you would expect maybe to see in this area. See that? Okay. We'll just continue like that. Maybe right from over here is a little something going over the rocks there. You can sort of make it up as you go along, really. I'm just painting in some. Now I can highlight and probably will with the with the liner brush with a thin paint that way it'll stick really easily. So for now, I'm just really experimenting with getting all of these splashes and waterfalls where I want them. There you go. And nothing here is perfect. I'm just getting the overall idea established really. Well, I've taken just a few minutes to clean up my palette. I thought that would be useful. And uh, let me see, right up in here, I want to paint in just a few little tree trunks. Not too, too many, but just uh, just enough to kind of give the indication of, oh, okay, there's a little something going on in there. There we go, just a few here and there. And it kind of creates a nice look. Maybe these tree trunks are hanging out, and you know, that's pretty. So I've got this green color mixed up. I'm just going to place in some little bushes here. I'm, I'm just throwing the color down, then I'll probably take a different brush. You know, a lot of this is going to have to be cleaned up with a liner brush. I haven't even begun really to detail out this. I just, maybe I have just begun, but you get the idea. And, yeah, and I may, I may come in here with the liner brush with the detail round brush something just to change it up a little as the fan brush alone is not going to get this thing to where I want it. I'm going to put on a few extra details here to this roof. Some of these panels, I'm not going to go and detail everything out real crazy. I'm just finally getting back to working a little bit on my on my shed or my mill building, whatever this is. There, that works. Just establishing a few extra colors, you know? There, boom. It's some texture. You can do a lot with a little when it comes to stuff like this. These metal roofs, there's really no reason to spend more than just a minute or two on something like this. They're very simple, very straightforward to paint typically. All right, we've got a very small uh, major emergency. <laughs> uh, I was looking at my building here. Something is wrong with the perspective. Uh, with this, How long have I been painting? You think I could do the proper perspective, but rather than trying to adjust all of this with my landscape and whatever and trying to like shrink the building. Um, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. We're doing this. I'm going to cover up this edge but for the most part, not all of it. I think it's going to help just integrate this barn or the building into the painting. And that'll be nice. Create a bit of a slope here. It's all good stuff. It's all good. No problem. It's kind of maybe abandoned. I mean, surely it is, but 
And so it's okay to kind of have some stuff growing up around it. But the, the perspective of the roof line and this back wall was a little weird. Now that it's covered, though, I'm good with it. Let me stand back and see. Yeah, made a big difference. I'm going to close it in just a little bit on this side as well. I was planning to do that on this side for sure. Like, you know, all of this was going to be kind of closed in a little bit more. But now, might as well go ahead and get it in, you know. And that way I don't have to worry about it. Now I've got just a little bit of thin down white and blue on the liner brush. And I'm going to highlight our water. The reason I'm doing that is because when you have so many layers of paint, sometimes it's just easier to use the liner brush and not a different brush. Because it'll give you a sharp detail, a sharp texture, even over several layers of paint. Because the paint is so thin, it just glides on them. And the brush is very soft. Both of those things working together makes this a good, a good way to kind of finish out anything. That's why we save it for the end, really. Although this isn't the end, it is sort of the end of the water. Get that figured out right now, you know, get that all established. I think that's pretty good. Maybe not as much on that one, maybe a little more here. So anyway, I'll just play around with this. It's a little slower doing it with a liner brush, but it, it gives a nice result. And because there's so many layers of paint on there now, this is pretty much the best way to do it. Now I'm gonna paint in some little flowers, like a flowering tree. You know, this painting would be beautiful if you did it in autumn. Of course, I'm doing it in spring because uh, autumn's right around the corner. So why not do spring? <laughs> Yeah, hey, it's fun of art and it's fun of painting. You can do anything at any time, whatever you want to do. It just doesn't matter. You don't have to live on the beach to paint the beach all the time. And uh, I don't think we get into that mistake, you know, and I think that's a good example. Like, you know, I'm originally from California. I've painted the beach a lot, but if you've never been to the beach, then you could still paint the beach a lot and really enjoy it because you have so many like endless photos and videos you could look at of waves and whatnot speaking of which i think a video would probably be better if you if you've only been to the ocean a few times and get a feel for how that wave actually maneuvers and works but anyway my point is if, if you don't live in the desert you can still paint deserts and I, I think we just get stuck sometimes painting only what's around us in our area and I think that's a, I think that's not something we should do, you know. In fact, every once in a while, I would challenge you to go across the other side, whatever, wherever you live on the planet, go across the other side of the planet and pick a subject. I've done that a couple times in the past. I mean, most of my paintings could be from a lot of different places, but I've done specifically paintings, you know, from, from other places that I've never been. There you go. And I've got a nice light color going on the three quarter or the one quarter inch brush. And I'm going to, I'm going to begin to paint in just some of these boards. And I got to be kind of careful here with the perspective of them. I want it to be, I want it to be right. I want it to look correct. It's an old rickety bridge, there's no doubt. But that can only get you so far. And you, you, you probably know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there, haven't we? I think so. Like if you've done any painting at all, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes things look too rickety <laughs> and the perspective is just not quite right. Let's go ahead and continue here, just creating some of these boards. It's softer over here. I want them kind of to, to disappear. Remember, there's virtually no paint down in this area. Anyways. Very little. Yeah, even some purple things are okay. Maybe like just make it look like dirt or something. I don't know how much it needs it, but I'm just highlighting this little, just the top of maybe some of this rock here. It's gonna be partly shaded by these trees, but some, some light's getting through. And uh, well, you know, there you go. You just play around until you get it just the way you like. That'll work. You know what, just little by little building this up even here i gotta be real careful because it's some thin paint left over from like some of that grass that i put in there is a little bit thin because i got oil all over my palette <laughs> and that's part of the reason why you don't do the liner brush till the very end because you will 
inherently thin down your whole landscape, whether you want to or not. It's just going to happen. All right, well, that wraps up this painting for today. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, Brushline, and of course, Patreon. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos, and stay inspired.